Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ravinia Festival. Please note that the taking of photographs, including the use of camera phones and the use of audio or video equipment, is strictly prohibited. As a courtesy to the artist and your fellow patrons, please ensure that all mobile phones, pagers, and anything with an on-off switch have been silenced. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you for making it a great day at Ravinia. Hi there, good afternoon, and thanks so much for being here at our first public event at the uh, Staines Institute Program for Singers. I'm so excited to be here today, and I'm really excited about the singers that we have with us this summer and the amazing pianists who are collaborating with them, and we have really a terrific faculty as well. As all of you know, Ravinia is such a special place, and I, I've, always, I've been coming here since the early 90s. The music making here is always so inspiring, and it, provides the great atmosphere for us to have three weeks intensive of work um, pouring over texts and poetry and music, discussing together, um, preparing uh, both technically, we have vocal technique lessons, we have coachings, we have uh, uh, body work, Alexander technique, so it's really a comprehensive program and uh, it's, it's just an exciting atmosphere. Um, to me, the human voice is the most expressive instrument that there is. I just find it fascinating. Um, and because, because the singer has their instrument in their body, uh, everything that the singer does and thinks and says and uh, the way they sleep or they don't sleep or what they had for dinner, it affects the way they make music and the way they sing. And so it's both exciting and complicated uh, for them. And you know, brave is the soul who will stand up on a stage and open their mouth and share their insides for an audience. Um, for them to bear their souls, um, their vulnerabilities, and their strengths. And doubly brave is a singer who will stand on the stage and let somebody like me tinker with them in front of 200 strangers. So um, they're all troopers for doing that. Um, if you see in your program today, um, each singer has listed a, an art song and an opera aria. And I asked them to do that because we may not do both or we might do one or the other with, depending on time with each singer. Um, but I find it fascinating, uh, although we, you know, we focus primarily on art song here at Staines, my whole emphasis is really helping, trying to help the singer find the full range and expression of their voice and their singing. Sometimes when a singer approaches an opera aria, they might approach it differently than they approach an art song. And that might seem like an obvious thing, but sometimes they tend to over-adapt their technique, I think. And art songs are really miniature dramas in themselves. So I think it's neat to always kind of keep throwing different things at them, um, different genres, different styles, and trying to help them find that balance between um, a balance of expression and finding the way to optimize their instrument no matter what um, style they're singing in. So um, as we go along today, if you have any questions or just shout out, raise your hand, I'll try to answer them. I'll leave a little time at the end too to, for any discussion or questions or comments that you might have. Um, I hope you enjoy just seeing a little bit of a glimpse about the way we work. And uh, let's work, welcome our first duo. Thank you. 
what a beautiful way to start, beautiful. Um, th this song is so gorgeous that the text is really so evocative, right? And I think, I think, how many of you know that song? Anybody know it? Right. Steve Blyer knows it, of course. He knows every song. <laughs> um, it's, it's a little bit tricky for the ear to catch sometimes um, because of the way it, it meanders through different tonalities and chromaticism, right? And also, the piano writing is amazing. Peter, great job. It's very orchestral, you know, there's lots of colors. Um, I would say everything is beautiful. And it's, I, I know Emily, I've, I've met her a couple of years ago and it's nice to hear you again. I haven't heard her yet um, this summer and you sound great, really beautiful. What I would say is to maybe try, everything's exactly right. I know everything that you're doing, it's so expressive, but I would love it if the text maybe drove the line a little bit more. Um, there's these little variations in meter, right, that happen, and sometimes I feel you following the meter a little bit more, and I would love it that the text maybe had more to do with it. Can we start it again and just yeah. try a little bit of it? Maybe a little bit more scherzando in the beginning, for instance. Not, P Peter has it, but I mean, in, in, the, in the text a little yeah. bit more. I could maybe use, people always talk about diction. It's not that I would want more diction, it's just that I would love it that, that the way that you, the sensory way that you pronounce the words has so much more to do with the music making that, or the sound that comes out and that you trust that. It's not about making sure that we understand, although that's important, but using the text and the way that you deliver the text in a physical way has something to do very much with the vocalism and, and the expression. It's good, it's good, the sound is very good. But for instance, when you get to the first long tone, I hear monte, mm. I hear you stop. Because if I see it in the score, I see it's a dotted eighth note, and the other ones are sixteenth notes, so it's longer. It, it's hard when we have, especially when it's complicated rhythm, and you probably had to work it out a little bit. You have to trust not the visuals of what you have in the music. You have to, it's like if we sing something, it's always interesting when we're singing in a language that, which is not our first language, although you pronounce the Italian beautifully and everything's exactly in the right place. But when we sing in a language that's ours, if we, which English is for you, don't you notice how you tend to bend the rhythms a little bit around the text? And so it is with this too. You have to, even if it's not your first language, you still have to keep finding a way to bend it around so it's, it's yours, it's your language, it's your mode of expression right now. Even if you make a mistake, don't worry about that. Okay. Everybody makes mistakes, but don't worry. One more time. Good. Very good. That was different. Yeah. Can, can you just sing the, the tone on Moor? The G natural? That, that G to me sounds different than the other one. Hmm. Does it feel any different? You didn't notice. I didn't notice. The other one, for, all of a sudden there's a, there's a change, right? There's a change in the text. This is very like quick changing. Yeah. There's so many little episode, episodes that, yeah. that happen quickly. And in a way you have to be ahead of it. You can't, you can't just take it as it comes. And when you isolate the tone, I hear, for me I hear a little bit more balance in your sound. Okay. I want to hear a different expression. Yeah. Can you start right there? Say, Can you just say the text for me? Right, but see, you, when you, right now you accent per because it falls on a beat. Yeah. Try it again. Don't think, of, don't think of where the beats fall. Just think of the text for a minute. Just speak it. Good. Say it again and think of what it means. Yeah. 
See, now that's different. And it was basically the same rhythm. Yeah. And, and I think it's always good for a singer to, to be, I know you've said it to yourself and you've spoken it, but it's, it's, mu it's very important to always work with the text a little bit away from the music so that you can feel the sensual feeling of what, what that text is in your mouth, the way it feels and the way you think about the text. So that when you, then when you marry it to what the, the way the composer sent it and to set it into the rhythms that he makes you do, um, you have a, a kind of a, a more layered approach, I think. You know, you have a more um, verbal sense of, of how the text goes. Can you just say it one more time? Good, now tell them what that means. Um, there's murmuring through the forests. The rivers are murmuring through the forests. Okay. Like not just any old murmuring, river murmuring. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now, now, think of that text, and if if the rhythm's a little off, don't worry about it for a minute. Just start right there. Yes. For me, it feels a little bit more free. Just sing the mood again for me, just alone, though. Yes. For me, the other tone skates a little bit outside of your full connection. I want that one. Okay. And because I know her, I know what her habits are, so <laughs> try it again. Good. Now say, can you say that text for me? So do no. Yeah, see, he, he does something that's not nice. He makes you hold the tone a little bit longer than you would if you said it, yeah. right? So you have to figure out a way to deal with it. Say it one more time. Good gemer. What does that mean? Moaning. Je exactly. So use the accent and, and, and say it one more time and think of the, you say it properly, but just think a little bit more what it means. Um, Good, now let's sing it. Good, very good. That's different. That, I love how that felt. Right, it's so hard when you're learning um, things. It's, it reminds me of like sometimes in some opera houses, they'll, in some places, and I won't say anything specifically, but if, there, if you're learning a Secco recitative in a Mozart opera, the, sometimes the conductor will make you do it exactly the way the rhythms are written, whereas, and if you learn it that way, it makes it, even, even if you have a very good facility with the text, it's almost impossible to unlearn that, to make it sound like you're actually saying it. And the, the whole point of the, the recit is to make it sound like it's being spoken. And the same thing in, with rhythms that don't exactly flow, they're maybe like, let's say in this case, they're interpreted in a colorist kind of way, and they don't exactly flow the way that you speak, you still have to find a way to, to, to bend it, to make it fit in, to make it sound natural, and to feel natural. And then it also enables your voice to open up and it, to make more colors too. Otherwise, it's just merely a, a general linear thing, right? Um, let's go on. A fauni. Tell, me, tell, tell us what the next part means. Um, a fauni in corsa. Uh, a fauni in corsa per gometi e clivi. So the fauns are running amongst the forest, amongst these little hills. Um, erti le corna uh, sulle fronte opuse. Uh, they have erect horns on their heads. So I think we're maybe setting up someone else's entrance already. Yes, um, and then bevono. This then the, this. Uh, bevono per dornari camuse filtri sottili e zeffiri lascivi. Uh, they're drinking in through their snub noses um, these subtle filters and uh, lascivious whims. <laughs> it's great. Okay, <laughs> let's start on the vivace. It sounds like something Steve Blyer would say to me in a meeting and try to make me turn red when he, <laughs> he always jokes with me, tries, tries to embarrass me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, sorry, because it's short, don't take away the, t the tone. Mm, okay. 
Don't, you, you're, you're already preparing for what you perceive this shortness to be. Just give me your, your whole instrument. Your, your brain and everything knows what the words are. Just sing. No. Sorry, just start, do it once on your own. Just start right on the, the text. Sing it. No. You're, it's a little artificial. Okay. You're trying to make the right sound. No, say it, say it big for me. Now sing it like that. You see? The other one is, the other one is, I think it should sound like this, so I'm going to make it sound, I'm going to sing it like that. But this one is allowing your instrument to be hooked up, the whole thing. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Okay, let's start right together one more time on the vivace. Okay, good, good. Zefiri la Shivi. Can you say it? Zefiri la Shivi. Just sing it from there. No, sing Zephyr on the same tone once. One more time. That one. Okay. That you, one. What's the difference? I, I Do you guys hear a difference from that? Yeah, you got it. Yeah. The other one, it's like you perceive the high, the raising tessitura, so you lift off a little bit. I don't want that. No. no. <laughs> Let's try it right from there, Zephyr. I'm a big proponent of breathing. Uh, me too. Yeah, I think it's good. I could use it. I'm all for breathing. I, 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 don't, I don't mind when singers breathe in the middle of phrases, especially when the words are elongated in such a way. If you need it, it's much better to take a breath than it is to run out or, or to lose a little bit of color, you know? Yeah. Uh, so don't, don't ever apologize for it, okay? Yeah, I'm an advocate for breathing. It keeps you going. <laughs> Okay, let's just go on though, contenta, because I want to hear, I just want to hear a little bit of the Queen of the Night, just, we won't work on it, but I just want you to be able to sing it. Contenta. Great, and and you see you, that vivo. I think you took it, uh, it. You moved a little bit more, and what it does is it creates a natural way to make the uh, the beats fit in in a way where the, it fits the words very well. Yes. Yeah. I can do that at the beginning too. It's, yes, it exactly. Force me to do it as much. Exactly right. You wanted to sing the Queen of the Night aria just for the fun of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Oh, the wish, 
That's really great. I can't resist it. One little thing. <laughs> a la banda, when you get to the, the triplets. Placido Domingo always said something that, that I, it always resonates. And when he, talked, he said, piano is a color, right? <laughs> Dynamics are a color. And sometimes we tend to overreact. So there, trust that the orchestration changed, but don't take away your sound. Okay. You know, let's try it once more. That's good. Yep. Good. And, and good. And think, again, you perceive it as short. It is short, but it has to be, it has to have all the roundness and all the color that you have. Don't okay. take ever, don't, I don't care what any conductor or coach says to you, don't take away your color or your sound for any dynamic or any articulation. It, it should be the articulations, but it's got to be the articulation in your instrument. Yes. Right? Give her the pop pop Yes. Keep it. Change. See, hurt, 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 hurt. Okay, one more. Hurt. Next we have Rehan and Zalman. Good afternoon. I will sing and Zalman Kelber will uh, perform together. We will perform Stehe Still from Wesen Donk Lieder by Wagner. Uh, in the poetry, the poet, poetess, wishes for time to stop. All of these crazy things that are happening and um, the pulses are, are swaying and creation is going and time is passing and I want to just enjoy this moment and enjoy the, my love as our eyes sink into each other and our souls join and I have found the secret solved the riddle of holy nature. Oh! 
<laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I await your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Your, your voice is so beautiful. It's fun. I, we just got here the other day, so I really haven't heard everybody uh, in a while. So it's just so exciting to hear this. I love the color of your voice. It's so beautiful. You're so musical. Well played, Zolman. Um, at the end here, Erkent der Mensch der Ewigen Spur. And then this is kind of like playing something like the end of Morgan or something. We have to be, we feel we've got a whole bar of nothing. And, we, and so we want to get rid of it sometimes. And don't, don't want to get rid of that after the C major, the, the um, four measures before the four four. Take your time. Don't cut it off. Um, can you tell me the text right there from Erkent der Mensch? Und Lust. And has discovered, has um, the found the, solved the riddle, the riddle of holy nature. Good. Can you say it in German? Yeah. Um, Erkennt. Erkennt der Mensch des ewigen Spur. Ewigen. Ewigen Spur. Und löst dein Rätsel heilige Natur. Right. That's what Wagner does to us a lot. He takes a, sh a short phrase and makes it last for an awful long time, right? right. right? If you look at, <laughs> I once worked with a, um, a stage director in Paris. He was doing Parsifal, and this guy was a brilliant guy, a very um, creative and interesting guy, but he didn't really know opera very well. Um, he's a theater director, and he learned the, the piece basically out of the, the, the CD booklet. Right? He was looking at the text out of the, the CD book, and he sees Gournemont's, the, the bass, and you know, he sees a, a little bit of text like this. Well, he said, oh, that doesn't take too long. Well, that's about 45 minutes of Gournemont's, this amount of text, and he didn't know what to do with the staging. Oh, I didn't know it was going to last that long. And, well, there, there happens to be a lot of music underneath that. that <laughs> um, so, it's good the way you say it. I needed to find that connection somehow. I think singing and the way that you speak, if you speak well, finding that connection between your sound and the, your own physicality and the way that you speak, mm -hmm. I, I want to encourage every singer to keep looking for that. Yeah. And it's especially hard in a, a piece like this where you care very much about it and it's, it's, you feel something very strong about it and you know very much what we should hear and what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And you're right about that. But sometimes you can't give us the result. Yeah. You can't give us the end result. You have to start from the beginning part. Whereas it's just the way that you say the text, what you think about it, what you feel here and here, and trust that that development that goes through your filter of your voice, your instrument, comes out to us with that. But you can't start at that end. Right. So sometimes, especially with colorful voices like mezzos and, and baritones, you want to make that thing, mm -hmm. the round thing. And it, it should be round and beautiful, but you have to keep finding the true connection so right. that you don't overdo the registration here or there, right? Yeah. Say it once more, just erkent. Erkent der Mensch. 
revenge. Good. Now, even though it's painful, try to say it now. Sustain the speech and say it in the exact tempo that you sing it. No, that's faster. Okay. Yeah, don't change. Just say, Er kennt der Mensch. Good. Good. Now sing it. Right on the chord there. Just think of that. Don't think of the sound that you want. Yes. You see? What's the difference? Did it feel any different? Yeah, I felt different. I can do it better. You can do it better? Well, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, but I want to do it better. <laughs> did you guys hear? What did you hear? Did you notice a difference? What was the difference? Brighter? Yes. More That's the one I say. Well, honest, because it's hers. The other one is what she wants it to be. And, right. and, and it's a good one, too. What you want, but that's, that's really what you wanted it to right. be. Yeah. But, you have to try, but that feels like you're not doing anything. Right. You're not working hard enough. But you are. And singing, I think, and, and music making and any instruments, I like to think gas pedal and clutch. Gas pedal's doing, clutch is letting. And it's always that fight, that balance between both. And sometimes when you're caught in the perfect tension between the doing and the letting, it feels like you're not doing anything because you're used to doing so much right. the other way. So you just have to keep finding that zone. You have to keep finding the sweet spot yeah. in every register of your voice right. and trust it. Can we start there one more time? Mm. No, oh, sorry, the same place. Oh, sorry. No. See, that was, that was a little bit the other way for me. Really? Okay. Say, say it again. Just access where your speaking voice is once. Er yeah, don't, don't drive it. Just let it hang out. Er don't place it. The, the low one was good. It was okay. like in your normal speaking range. Okay. Er no. Say er kent. Er kent. Good. Now sustain that. No, it's different. Er mm -mm. Say it short. Er kent. Er kent. Er kent. Er kent. That's where your speaking voice is, right? right? Now just just sing there. Don't don't care about what pitch it's on. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. That's the one. It, I know it feels vulnerable. It, it might break. Just just go with it. Yes. Right. I like that. Okay. For me, that's it. I know it's it's like she's fighting because she's like it's out of control now, right? But it's a good one. Now all you have to do is just hang with it. Mm -hmm. It whenever you have you know everybody talks about making a long line. You don't have to think of it being a long line, and sometimes it's not helpful to think of it as being a long line even, because the, the tendency is to want to drive it forward. As long as you're making the sound, the tempo will take care of the line. So when it's really an uber long line like this is, just think about hanging out and, and maintaining rather than going forward. So if it's Sorry, I, I lost my voice, I have a cold. But man's that if you don't have to drive through it, just hang out and and think about what this means, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like you're solving everything mm -hmm. in this part. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Still a little too early. Still early.
the B, just a hair. It's so painful because we can't, we're stuck with a chord that we can't do anything with, right? And so we want to get off of it. That was good. You still want to like drive it. That's the thing. You don't need to. Your voice is connected. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's everything. Okay. And then you get more breath that way too because you don't drive it forward. Right. That was good. Let's just go back to the beginning a minute. And this is like stop the world. I want to get off, right? That the world is churning. Right. Can you just say it for me in German? Zausendes. Zausendes, brausendes Rad der Zeit, messe du der Ewigkeit. Good. Try not to, it has certain stresses in the text, it's true, but try not to do it like everyone's the same. Let it, let it just roll forward the way you say it. One more time. Zausendes, brausendes Rad der Zeit, messe du der Ewigkeit. Good. And what's the feeling that this person has when she says it? Panic. Yeah. You, you, it's, say it more with panic. Zausendes, brausendes Rad der Zeit, messe du der Ewigkeit. Yes, that's good. See, so you don't have to drive it. The, the, the motion comes from inside in a yeah. sense, right? And now trust that. And because the tessitura is where it is, it, it kind of dips in the middle voice to the low and it's kind of wonky here and there, right? Mm -hmm. Try to, whenever that's the case, when you don't feel like you're in the meat of your voice and you don't, like you can't get the full connection that you could, let's say if you were on a higher note, mm -hmm. think of saying the text with more energy, that the text, that you can lean on the text rather than leaning on the sound. Okay. One more time, just say the first couple of lines. That's good, great, let's write on it. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, okay, very great. Good, good. Zausendes. I hear zausendes. When you say it, you, you pronounce it all. Okay. Don't, don't give into the beat of the music. Okay. Good, good, good. That was better. Um, just sing zausendes. Give it the... Yeah, don't, don't think I'm going low. Just say Zausendes. Zausendes. Now sing it there. Zausendes. 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 Good. Now sing with that connection. Zausendes. Brausendes. Zausendes. Brausendes. Good. I mean, it comes out clearer, doesn't it, on the bottom? And you're not forcing it. Right. That's the idea. So it has this panicky feel, but you're in complete control. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an illusion. You're an actor. Mm -hmm. That was good. One more time. Oh, sorry. Messe du der Ewigkeit. Say it once. Messe du der Ewigkeit. What does that mean? Measurer of eternity. Of eternity. Messe du der Ewigkeit. Say it again. Messe du der Ewigkeit. You're measuring it a little bit in the beats. Just release it. Messe du der Ewigkeit. That's right. Now sing it right on there once. Messe no, you converted it to music again. The music will happen, but don't, don't keep converting it into musical phrases. Just trust that, that you say it in the right time, it'll become the right musical phrase. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good, that's better. Just sing Der Ewigkeit once. That's the one. The other one you kind of made sure. Mm -hmm. And, and it, didn't, it didn't have the gut feeling like that one does. Now let's start again from Zausendes. Good, 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 good. And take it, just, you know, be a little bit soprano -y and take a little bit of time for the high note. <laughs> right? And, and, and taking time for it, that sound gives us the, the expression of what happens, right? Die der umringt. Good, 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 good. And that's good. That one you took a little bit more time. You said, Lass mich sein. Yeah. 
and then let it, and then the motion stops. Yeah. So let, don't think it lost me. Shine, halt die Shan. It's it's finally you you demanding it to let you be right. That was great. Um, let's go on. Halt an dich. Halt an dich How was the timing there? Did you have enough time before Dasim Zedish, or did you want more? Well, we've been, we've been playing with it, we did, um, but we could do it either way. It felt to me like you weren't ready to come in. Okay. And so maybe, maybe you can just stretch it a little bit. This is the kind of song that's actually easier if you're with an orchestra and the conductor is conducting it. it it's, it's hard. It's something that you have to work out right. together, but it's very good already. Um, Try it once, let it swirl over a little bit on the top, maybe Zalman. How about Schwellen de Pulsa? It's a completely different thing, yeah. right? How about Ich Merk alle wonnen? Ich Merk alle wonnen ermessen. No, 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 no. Oh, I but I like that. I love the ermessen now. It's, you see, you're, I can see her fighting it like she's like, it's, it's like you're looking at it, it's going in the right place, but I don't like it because I don't have control over it, but it sounds great. It's really good. One more time. Ich merk. Remember in that G natural, just in your speaking range. Okay. Right on it. No, no, no. You don't need more. You're already good on Ven. Don't Ven. Ah. Ven. Right there. Right. But see, think of the vowel. What is the vowel? Ah. Aug. Right, we are oh. Okay. Then. More ooh, more ooh, more ooh. <laughs> it's just pressed out a little. Ah, oh. Think ow. Oh. Say it like like you're lifting it. Ah. Oh. Better. Yes. Take your time here. Take your time up. Take your Don't worry about your breath.
one. Good. Take your time. Lots of magic there. That was great. Thank you. Okay, we have Cooper and Peter. by Charles Griffiths, who's an American composer, um, probably best known as uh, one of the fathers of uh, American Impressionism. Um, the poetry is not by a person originally named Fiona MacLeod. The poetry is by William Sharp, a Scottish poet who wrote under the pseudonym of Fiona MacLeod. And uh, his wife revealed that um, f uh, several years after he died. So uh, interesting, interesting um, poetry. So here we go. This is. Uh, the Lament of Ian the Proud. Thank you. 
Well, wow, you sound great. Thank you. Excellent. It's a great song. Does everybody understand the text? No. It's hard to understand, isn't it? It, it it's not it's not just about diction. It's just hard. Yeah, it's a little esoteric. And... A little bit. It's even hard when you read it. Um, but I think you can work maybe a hair hard, a, 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 a little bit more to to make okay. us understand it. Sometimes. With these texts, you have to kind of grab us by the shirt collar and say, listen, yeah. you know, to the text. So maybe 20% more okay. diction. But again, you don't want to get in the way of your, your sound, but it's, it's really good. Um, can you just give me who am old and blind? The last words he says are, who am old and blind? Crying to me, who am old and blind. But just start right on the measure of who am old and blind. When, he, when you say that, who, who am old and blind, what did, how do you feel, the guy? Defeated, I think. Uh, right, you sound a little too healthy to me. Okay. <laughs> you don't sound so defeated. Sure. It's a great sound, though. <laughs> but I, I want to I find that way where you can marry it, where it's still, uh, your instrument is really great and intact and everything, but you're still giving me that whole, that whole range. Cool. Say it once in your own voice, your speaking voice. Who am old and blind? Say it a little slower. Who am old and blind? Who? Who? See, ooh vowels are so great, aren't they? And O oh vowels in Italian, they kind of give you your insides. Mm -hmm. they, they, they bring your insides out for everybody. Who? Just sing that. Who? It's a little who. Who? Yeah. yeah, now softer. Good, now sing who am old. Sing now sing the whole thing, Who Am Old? Exactly. Yeah. It's so hard for a tenor, I mean, for a tenor just to get it together already is a big deal, right? I mean, it's a... That's why, that's why tenors get paid all the, the money, you know? Because when they're singing those high notes, we all sense the danger. We know somehow, in, even, if, even if we don't really know, we, we somehow we viscerally feel that they're living near the danger zone, right? And so when they master it and they get it together, boy, it's exciting, right? And we love when you live near the danger. It's great. So, so it's hard to sometimes, you're very musical and expressive and, and as tenors go, you've got, you've got your voice together and you've got the expression. But it's every tenor to a certain extent is always living in that thing where, oh shoot, here's the F sharp and here's the G sharp, right? And you, and you always have to get it. So you have to always keep challenging yourself, and especially in a song like this, to f keep finding the full range and, and, and the boundaries, right? That you're not afraid to go near the danger zone, both in the soft place and the, and the big place, right? Always find that. Now the beginning. Just, just speak it to me once. What is this crying that I? I'm doing the rhythm. Mm -hmm. What is this crying that I hear in the wind? Right. It, what's the feeling? Is there a frustration or? I think I think it starts out as a frustration and a, a, a bewilderment, a, um, all accompanying a remorse. Okay. Say it again. What is this crying that I hear in the wind? Say it a little bit for the, the middle of the auditorium. What is this crying that I hear in the wind? Good. Now right on the measure up. What is this crying? Good. That's already different. Well, is there something different that you feel? Yeah. What is it? Um, a more vulnerability to the, to the sound and less... Yeah, the other one, it was a little bit hefty and a little bit bottom heavy, I would say. And I like that connection, but again, maybe that one was a little bit disconnected. I don't know. But you have to keep finding, keep playing with the full range, right? What? Just sing what. And use the wh. What? What? No, I, I want to hear what. Yes. What is this cry? What 
There's a good look that I... Good, 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 pretty good. Again, use the vowel, use, it, it's, the actual physicality of the word helps express the meaning of the text, like the O. Is it the old song? It's a little, for you, you're a little, it's a little American, it's a little bit back. Think a little bit more sure. formal. Is it no. The, is <laughs> no, it it's okay, it's low. Right? So, but don't try to manufacture a sound. Try to find it in reality. Yes. No. Not bad. You're, you're saying the right vowel, but you're placing the sound outside of it. Use the vowel to help place the sound. Ds are hard. It's like starting with Dala Suapacha, right? For a tenor, it's hard. But almost. Almost. Go, go a little bit further. That was better, but see, uh, uh, you had old sorrow, which was great, and then you geared up a little bit because you think an F sharp's coming. You were already in a good zone, you don't have to change. <laughs> Can you try it one more time? Is mm -mm. it the, is it the old sorrow and the That sounds so much more natural to me. Go on. Or is it a new thing coming? about the gray hair of me who am weary and Much, much better, much better. That was good. About the gray hair of me who am weary and blind. I think you can, the, you know the best singer of consonants I ever heard in the English language was Frank Sinatra. He, you know, I mean, he, he holds onto those R's in such an unnatural way, but somehow he, I don't know, he uses text so well. Mm, yeah. Sometimes you can overdo it a little bit more. Sure. Try it once, how about about the gray hair? Good, better. I would, I would go even a little further. Who am we? Who am we? Yeah. Sing, sing on a little bit. Right on who? who am mm. Wait, see who is good, but then you go who am we? Who am we? Better. That's better. Just sing blind. blind. It's a little light. Say blind. 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 No, no, no. Use that connection, but don't push on it. Blind. Blind. Good. That's the idea. That's much better. So I think you can use all those um, places to really sink into the text and let that influence the, the sound that comes out. Should we just hear the, the just because not many people are singing this aria, so let's just hear it. <laughs> Not our normal fare at the Staines Music Institute, Leon Cavallo. Oh, 
that nature itself shows that even through pain and death comes a new morning, comes a sunrise, um, a form of, of resurrection. Um, and so the, the poet asks, why then does my heart feel so heavy when I'm experiencing such pain, when I know that in the morning there will come a new light? So it's, uh, it's an honor to experience pain from nature. Speak. 
Beautiful, beautiful voice, gorgeous, great playing. Um, what? Give me a couple of adjectives about the way this person feels. Um, I think very conflicted between the idea of this despair. They don't. They want to push against the despair, um, and and a sort of hope, but a weighty kind of hope. I think. Yeah, it's it's I'm kind more of. Than a couple of adjectives, but no, no, that's good. <laughs> It's, it's interesting, and that, you know, do you remember the temple marking of the song? Um, yeah, broad. Langsam und breit, and broad, right. Exactly, I think both of you can struggle a little bit more. There's a lot of meat, there's a lot of stuff packed in, in between every rhythm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of text, there's a lot of <laughs> to grab onto, and I think you can take the time to taste every consonant and syllable and, and struggle with it, right? Struggle, you know? It, it's, again, this idea of the, the style, the sound that you know that you should have and the way that this should sound is very much there in your mind, I'm sure. But you have to, again, you start, you gotta start from the beginning, from, I like, sometimes I think of, of the image of a megaphone for a singer. And the singer knows this part of the megaphone. That's the part that we get, right? It's got all this stuff. And you, sometimes you want to start there, but you have to start at this end. And you trust that it goes through the megaphone. It makes everything big. And it, it, again, if, so if, it, where you start from the more personal place, the, the place where this, the text emanates from, the, the place where the feelings emanate from, that's the place where the sound emanates from, it goes through your filter and it becomes the big, huge thing out there. But you have to sense it first and one way in this song, especially, there's so much text to hold on to that which can help. That gives so much energy. Zon, zon, right? It's a, you have so much of a voiced s there that you can use that'll help propel the sound for you. So you don't have to like throw it out there so much. Um, can you just can you speak the text a little bit? I always think, I make everybody do this. I think it's good because, first of all, it distracts you away, from, it distracts the singer away from their sound, so they're not constantly thinking about their sound. And, and it gives you some kind of a um, tangible physicality so that you can use the text as part of creating the right sound. Yeah? Try it. Zonna. No. See, I didn't, like, I almost got, didn't get the z, and they certainly didn't. <laughs> Zonna. Sonne weinest jeden Abend dir die schönen Augen rot. Die, die schönen, schönen. Die schönen Augen rot. Try it. Die schönen Augen rot. Augen. Augen rot. One more time. Die schönen. Die schönen Augen rot. Almost make a new rhythm for sch, for schönen. Die schönen yes. Augen rot. You're over darkening the Augen a little bit. They're saying Augen, Augen. Die schönen Augen rot. Augen. Rot. 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 Good. Now one more time, say the whole thing from Zon. Sonne weinest jeden. Good. And when you get to the Z, it's like you want, what are you saying here at the beginning? Sonne weinest jeden Abend. Son, you cry your eyes red every night. Why? Because it's being seized by early death yeah, darkness is taking over. You don't want it to, right? Zon! You want to keep the light as, as long as you can. So don't, don't be in a hurry to go on. <laughs> yeah, don't, just try to keep it as long as you can. Okay. And that, that's, your sound creates that. Zon! Zon, weinest jeden Abend dir die schönen Augen rot. Good, can we start right there? Just sing it. Don't think about the tempo. Just think about every word. Taste it and feel it and experience it. Pretty good. Pretty good. It, you get to the point and you don't quite release it because you're, you're monitoring it a little bit. Just release it. Yes. That was different. Right? It feels like you won't have the power if you do that, doesn't it? But you do. You ha your, your voice is good enough. <laughs> it's good. Okay, let's, can we start one more time, um, Nikolai, from the beginning? Yes, and the same thing for you, Nikolai. That, that chord is so hard, because it's like 
we have nothing to start from, but try to pull out as much as you can, like from that first chord. It's like willing the light to stay. Yes. Struggle with them. Good, good, good. We out of breath. So what do you do in that case? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Just take a breath. Where could you breathe? Uh, maybe before the Sure, that's fine. Good. And and sometimes you can take a breath in a way where it doesn't disrupt anything. It's only you know. Yeah. Nobody will know, and it gives you a little bit of time too. That, that's great. And a little trick when you when you're low in the register for. For this voice, when she's at the bottom of the staff, that's not where all your sound comes, right? So lean on the text more. Okay. Use, use the energy of the text. When, when you can't get everything that you want out of your sound and you can't push to make more sound, say the text louder and then the voice responds. So you have something to lean on to make you feel like you're giving everything that you can. Right on, Zonna? Yes, that was good. That was much better. Did you feel that, that you didn't have the urge to just plow through it? Yeah. And, and when, you, when you allow yourself to stay and you struggle with it and you wrestle with it, your sound starts to produce itself. Yeah. That was very good. Um, just give me Augen once. Augen rot. Yes. Wait, say it again. Augen. Now sing it. Right, now don't push it on the gen rot. Okay, what does that mean, wenn in mir das Spiegel baden dich? When in the mirror of the sea you bathe, seized by early death. Baden dich, baden dich, right. So feel, it's a little bad and dich. Sometimes you're, you have these, that's an equal rhythm, and then you have the dotted ones against, which is the struggling rhythms. Yeah. So you have to keep, kind of let the words and the rhythms fit together in the right way. Okay. Um, say it once. Wenn im Meeresspiegel baden dich. Just speaking. Wenn im Meeresspiegel baden dich. Baden dich. Good. Now, now sing it. Wenn. Wenn oh, you're trying too hard. Okay, pretty good. Just start on Badent once. Badent. Uh -uh. So it's, it's, it's fine. Every, every tone that you make is, is really beautiful and good. But I, I'm, always, I'm obsessed with like, making sure that you always find your bullseye. And don't just take it as it comes. Like, stay with it, struggle with it, like, play with it. One more time, just notice where that note is on Badent. Ba. It's too, it's a little just, yeah. oh. Yes, I like that one. Wenn im Okay, I know, it's, I know it's slow, but don't, don't worry, you have enough. Try from erreicht. Erreicht. Wait, it's too, when it's too low, or when it feels low, try to find a way to make it comfortable, yeah. no matter what. Okay. Like, don't, don't just take it and say, oh, I can't do it, no. Yeah. Like, take a little bit off. Don't lean on it so much. Don't push, whatever. Erreicht. Erreicht. Yes, and see, now it sounds like it's not too low. Okay. Yeah. yeah? One more time. Wenn in mir Spiegel. No, take, take your time. It, it can't move so fast down there. You have to just make a little bit of room for your sound. Okay. One more time. Yes. Good.
Yeah. Okay, good, good. What does this remind you of? Anything? Uh, the music? Yes. <laughs> yes, right. I mean, Lohengrin, let's say, or whatever. And, yeah, and you get the heroic thing going. But Gloria, I think if, maybe you're singing a wrong note. Gloria. Can you play the notes there? Did you sing that? Yeah. Dee, da, 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 dee. And don't think Gloria there. Gloria. Bend the rhythms around the word a little bit, right? Otherwise, it gets a little bit stuck. Doch er stehst. Okay, it's 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 too careful. It, it sounds glorious. I mean, your voice is beautiful, but it's a glory. Like you're, you're kind of thinking rhythmically a little bit. You have to release it. Don't worry if you if you make a mistake. Just let it go. What's what's the word? What does it mean? Glory of the gloomy world. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, let it let it sail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's good. The problem when, when you have a really good really good instrument like you do and then and you sing really well, you can get away with kind of being eighty percent there and everybody will say, Wow, that sounds great. <laughs> But you want to always make sure that you keep um, going as far as you can. Um, so th th I only I feel like that A flat isn't everything that it could be. Yeah. Do it once. Can you just do, just for an exercise, sing uh, the low A flat and sing glow, and then just go up the octave glow. Glow. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> you see. It, the, the reason why sometimes it works to sing it from like another, like a lower, uh, like an octave or a six or something like that, is that you find your, your um, equilibrium there and you don't care again because it's not the high note, it doesn't count, yeah. right? And so you find all your thing and then you just transfer and you go. Okay. Um, so you, it's like you trick yourself, right? Okay. So it, it's a good, or sometimes when you're, I think this is a great exercise for all singers, when you're singing something where, and I know every singer knows this feeling and every pianist and every instrumentalist knows it too. When you have an awkward passage and it feels awful and you're, you can't get your fingers around it or your voice around it or whatever the case may be, um, play it as a singer, sing it in a, in a different key. Mm -hmm. Sing it in a key where it's not hard. Yeah. Or if for a pianist, play it in a way where it's a little slower or adjust the fingering so that you play it where you get yourself comfortable so you're not living in that mini panic mode. That, <laughs> yeah. that, and then we build the layers in there and then we, even if we think that we're comfortable and that we've re released it, we haven't. We, so you have to keep finding ways of throwing off the shackles of okay. those places that are, are a little bugaboos, you know? Yeah. Try it one more side, just the octave ones. Glow. Okay. Glow. Oh. The bottom wasn't as good. Sorry? The bottom wasn't as good. Okay. Yes, see when the bottom's better, then the top gets better. Yeah. Because it, it's everything. Okay, now try, to, try it in context once. Okay. Doch er No. So da. Doch er. Keep that dignified, beautiful sound. Look at you. You're a tall and beautiful girl. You've got to keep that tall, dignified sound all the time. Okay, but see, you, you, you stop. You, it's, like, it's like if you're swinging a tennis racket and you want to check halfway through and you stop swinging to make sure that you're not going to hit the ball too. But if you stop swinging, it doesn't, the, the momentum doesn't help. Gloria de. It's like, Gloria. You can't check it. You get follow through. You can, you can always go back and pick up the pieces if it fell apart. You know? And we're just friends here, so don't worry about that. No, it's not as good. Not skating a little. Glory. Right, right on it. Louder. Sorry, go on. Okay, say. What does this mean? Wie ein stolzer Siegesheld. Like a proud victorious soldier. Yes. Imagine who, who's the guy. You know, you know, Sieg, Sieg, 
Monter Siegfrieder, you know. Um, wie ein stolzer Sieges, stolzer. It's a, it's a great word. Say it. Wie, wie ein stolzer. Now sing it from there. Yes, you see, and you see when you isolate it, it's, it's not so long and you have much more energy and it's more com compact and condensed, right? So you have to find that when it's attached to the whole phrase. Can we draw it from Du am Morgen neu erwacht? Be careful not to say Morgent neu erwacht because you, okay. you've got the T coming up of erwacht. Okay. Morgen, yeah? Okay. So, sorry, Zegus is a little under. Say Zegus. Zegus. Now sing it. Z yes, that one. You feel it release? Wie ein. Wie ein Stolzer Zegus. Sorry. It's not bad. It's not bad. But you go Stolzer Zegus. Stolzer Zegus. Let each note be where it, where it wants to go. Wie. Wie ein Stolzer Zegus. Now think of the words. Yeah, whenever you have ach, ach, yes, or oi, ach, yeah, not ach, that's two. Experience it. Mm -mm. Say, say it once. Ah. Ah. Now sing it like that. Okay, you're a little out of breath, right? Yes. <laughs> we found that solution before. Yeah. Just take a breath. <laughs> Sometimes when things seem like obstacles in life or in singing, singing is like a metaphor for life, embrace it and wrap yourself around it and enjoy it. Like so schwer. It's, it's low, but, but it's, it's wonderfully low. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful suffering. So schwer dich sehen. And so so schwer, so schwer. If you just, sometimes the note that you don't like that you think, ah, that's not a good note, my voice is too low, I, I just get off of it. No, stay on it longer. Yeah. That'll help it get better. Okay, yeah. Don't avoid it. But just try, wie mein Herz so schwer. Wie. Can I, wie mein yeah, E flat, yeah. Wie mein Herz so schwer. Yeah, take your time with so. See, Nikolai is a great accompanist and he's just gonna follow you. So. It, you can bend the notes around. It's like, a, you know, when a violinist plays um, a bunch of 16th notes in a row in a Baroque piece in Bach or something, they take the time for, to move the bow and they, it, they distort notes. Some notes are a little bit longer than others. And you can do the same thing here. As long as we feel the structure, it's, it, it won't sound like you're distorting, really. Okay. Yes, I would do it even more. It was better. But see, it feels like nothing, but that sound will carry. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a little connection, but it works great. Okay. One more time. So, so, A little bit. Sing so. Softer. There. Good, now in context. V, V mein Herz. Oh, breathe again. <laughs> Yeah, what are you saying here? Und gebiere tot nur leben. And death gives way only to life. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's this, 
constant contrast, yeah? Und gebietet. Breathe here. Take your time. Okay, okay. Sorry. It's, it's already pretty good, but what's the vowel? Ah? No, it's O. Oh. Yeah, O, oh, we done. Yeah, you're kind of, it's close. It's kind of in the range, but you're, you're futzing with it a little bit because it, it's safe. It's not safe to sing the O up there, but see what happens. Try it again from the bottom, an octave. Okay. Oh, give it the bottom, the low G. Oh. G. Oh. Yes, now start there. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, that one was like, like throwing a parachute and yeah. make sure it was a little safe. <laughs> it, the other one, you just gotta jump in. Okay. Do it again from the bottom. Yes. Now can you start there? Breathe. Okay. That's much better. Good. You have to trust the text. And, and with, with a driving song like this, the text is everything. Yeah. And then your voice responds. Beautiful. Thanks. Stephanie there? Hi. Hello, my name is Stephanie Smith, and today I'm going to start with Lee Hoiby's Insomnia, which is from his, his set, The Three Ages of Women. And this is with poetry by Elizabeth Bishop. And this poem is much like the title about insomnia and a woman who cannot sleep um, and I think she's stirring you find her stirring this entire song staring at the moon wishing she was like the moon and its confidence and presentation to the world at the end you find out that she is mourning and frustrated and unrequited love of sorts and that's keeping her up in this intense loneliness so this is insomnia
That is such a cool song. I love that. I wonder if, just the last note, I wonder if you should sing me, just keep it. I feel like you get soft and then crescendo, right? But I lose a little bit of, it, because there's so much going on on the piano, I, would, I, I wish you would just stay there and keep yeah. it. And, and trust, it's got that accent on it anyways, you know, and then just let it run out naturally. Okay. It's fine. What would you guys think about being a little bit more on the back of the beat? Yeah. Like, the tempo is pretty good, but it feels a little bit too easily moving forward. I, I would love it if it was just a hair more on the back of the beat. Absolutely. Can we start it again? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, you know what, I think, Nikolai, if, if the eighth note had a little bit more bum, yum, bum, bum, bum. And again, try maybe a little bit more. You started it the, the first time with a little bit more. I loved it. Yeah. Good. Look, it's the same thing we, I've talked with, with a couple other people. With the dynamics, you always have to make sure that the dynamic suits your sound. I mean, that you find the dynamic in your voice first. And, you know, I think composers sometimes overmark their scores. Um, you know, I, I just think there's too many marks. That, that guy that said too many notes, right, in the movie. Some, you know, you're probably going to crescendo on that note, it, it, right? And that you can't see the score, but there's like a little hairpin in the crescendo, and we see that, and we're like, we, we're, we all want to respect the composer so much, and it's true. But you'll probably naturally do that. So I always think, you know, or sometimes you'll be in the, in the rehearsal room, and, and the conductor will tell you, it's piano, it's piano, and you're in the staging room, and then you get in the theater, and nobody can hear you because he was making you sing so soft in the room, and overbalancing. You always have to make sure that you find your own equilibrium with it. So the, the range of dynamics is very personal and, and has so much to do with your instrument. Right. You know, so find, find your sound first and then worry about all that, the rest of it. And again, when you're careful like you are as, as a musician where you really l look at every detail, you don't ever have to think about it again. It's yeah. the people that don't look at it in the first place that they should look at it, you know? Right. Yeah. Let's try it again. Good. I, I just want to stop with the, it's, it's beautiful. When the, when the um, accompaniment stops, I wouldn't jump on the, the rhythm. As okay. long as the proportion's good, yeah. you don't have to jump off it. Because I would use the fact that all of a sudden the movement's gone away. Okay. Or perhaps, for instance, you know? Can we do it from far and away? Mm -hmm. Even for me, a little early still. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, 
Just use the, a, a second of the silence. Okay. As long as you're clear with the proportion. Right. How about uh, beyond sleep? It's, it's, it's much better. I love the go to hell this time. It was a little bit more raw. That was yeah. great. Look, by the universe deserted. We were talking about this with a couple other people. The rhythm is, is quite dictated, but you have to find a way to let it release a little bit. Right now you're kind of um, straight jacketing the text a bit into the rhythm. Right. You just have to release it. By the universe, you're doing by the universe. You know what right. I mean? Just try to release it a little bit. Can we start from the, the measure of that? Mm -hmm. The three, two. thinking of the beats a little bit, but he displaces a little bit at a body of water. You go, body of water. Right. You don't want to feel it that way. Right. You, so, uh, it makes it hard for us to understand right. when, you, when you kind of um, divorce the words um, the way they flow naturally, even right. though you've been saddled with rhythms. So you have to find a way to reconcile it so that we get it, and right. so that it swings. Can we do it? And she'd find a body of water? Mm -hmm. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, and um, Devonie's been moving in a new repertoire, and she's got poor Jim Moore, so I'd love for you just to have the opportunity to sing it. Yeah. You want to? Sure. Great. <clears throat>
It's one of the most beautiful pieces ever written, and it's so simple, but it's so darn hard, too. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's easy when you're by yourself, and it's so much harder when you stand up in, in a formal setting, and you, you do it really well, and I know it's new for you. You know, sometimes it's helpful, especially with very vulnerable things like, you know, when you're the Countess, it's the first thing you sing in the evening. I just got off a run of doing a bunch of Figaro's with two different casts of Countesses, and it's just fascinating to see what I know is going through their heads when they're right before they sing. And it's the first note that they sing of the night, and um, you can see the fear. <laughs> uh, because it, it's, we care so much about this piece and what it's going to sound like, and we know what we want it to sound like. And, James Levine, who I worked with a lot at the Met on Mozart, always used to tell us, be careful about putting um, your performance in a frame because mm -hmm. you're, it's never going to be frameable that way. You kind of have to just kind of um, do it, you know? Right. But with, a, with these lines, sometimes it seems like the way to help yourself out of danger is to move forward a little bit, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes if you just kind of stick with it, and say, I'm just gonna look in the mirror and address it and face it straight on. You, you, you find that your resources marshal to help you and, you and you really can do it. Like for instance, oh mi la shall me morir. Can we try that, just isolate that line once. Sure. <clears throat> your, your game, your, it's good, very good. Yeah, try, try to think of each note. Don't think of it as a connection. Just think each note has its own life for a moment. Okay. Wait, look, the problem is, is that that B flat is related to an ascent to the top note, right. to the A flat. Right. But if you sing in that B flat and you thought you had to go down, it would be a different B flat. Absolutely. So sing that one. And then, then the C after it, think of it as something else. And then pretty soon you've got a string of ones that are all easy. Right. Rather than a whole thing, that one thing that's hard. Right. Right, good. Pretty good. Pretty good. But say O. Oh. No, speak it. O. Oh. O. Oh. O. Oh. Oh. Sit and say it again. O. Oh. O. Oh. Sing it in there. No. You place it, you're, you're cultivating it. Yeah. It, it, it. What you want is right, but I think you can find it in a more natural way. Okay. Try it again, just say it. Oh. Oh. Sing it in there. Mm -mm. I, hear, I hear that top down, and when you say it, I hear oh. Okay. Instead of oh, oh. Yeah. Now think, yeah, no, that's too attached though. Think of each one isolated. Okay. Oh, really good. Yeah, you can do that like this in that setting, you're, you're, then you're golden. That's really good. Try the, the first phrase again. Okay. And the same thing, we think of again, it's this long line, the beautiful thing, floaty, all that stuff. Don't think about that. Think about, she's not thinking about that. She's thinking about, oh, you know, Give me something, give me something, give me some relief, right? So don't think of it as a long line. Think of, just live and wallow in your, you're feeling bad for yourself, right? Just, just wallow in it. So wallow in your sound, note by note. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. Don't want to leave any note. Milk them all. That's it. Each one. Each one. Yes, and you have breath for ages then. Start, start, it's vulnerable, just from your gut. Okay. 
Don't worry about the dynamic. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's a bel canto aria. Yes. Pretty good though. It's always hard in context. That's the hard yeah. thing. Let's go on. Okay. Do you mind if I try it one more time? No, I don't. <clears throat> Wait. The B flat will help you set it up. Mm -hmm. Find find that gray one. Okay. The bottom one. Find the bottom one. Oh, me la. Okay. Oh, me la. Mm -mm. Not quite, not quite. Just sing la. La. That one. in every note. Thank you all for coming. Is there anybody have any questions? Anybody have any comments, ideas, thoughts? No? Well, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you all at our, all our upcoming concerts and our other master classes. And uh, we'll see you around. Have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you.